Я приветствую всех бойцов и патриотов, которые в небезличное будущее России и которые готовы противостоять западной нечисти. У меня сразу возникает вопрос вам. Мы примем когда-нибудь такие европейские ценности, как сжигание Корана, оскорбительные рисунки нашего любимого пророка, саллаллаху алейхи вассалам, радужные флаги на стенах мечети, свадьба двух мужчин или двух женщин, или запрет называть сына мальчиком, дочь девочкой, а родителей мамой и папой. Запад хочет развязать войну на нашей земле и навязать свои мерзкие и гнусные идеи. А я отвечаю, лучше встретить смерть, чем увидеть, как этот мерзость портит наших детей. Более 10 лет Россию пытаются поставить на колени через экономические санкции и информационные вопросы. Более 20 лет наш президент Владимир Владимирович Путин защищает интересы страны, служит днем и ночью укрепляют нашу государство и заставляет весь мир считаться с нашей позицией. И сегодня мы, чеченцы, больше, чем другие, обязаны ему поддержкой. Именно благодаря его волевым решениям и ручному управлению мы восстановили нашу республику. В результате политики, которую определил Ахмад Хаджи Кадыров и который поддержал Владимир Путин, мы стали полноправным субъектом Российской Федерации. Мы растим ученых, спортсменов, артистов и героев. И я собрал вас, чтобы еще раз показать всему миру, что мы будем до конца отстаивать интересы нашего государства. И для того наши предки веками жили по датам и защищали Коран, чтобы сегодня психически больные европейцы навязывали нам свою сатанистскую мерзость. Около 10 тысяч наших отважных. Hey, so fam. So do we have? Yeah, Russia. Russia isn't um, ill prepared for this. They barely have been using, as Mark Sloboda said so when he was here. They barely have been using much of their military. Now they're just using a little bit more, but they're not even using that much, guys. So when you hear that, oh, Russia's uh, army is faltering, remember that the United States and NATO and their allies are willing to kill every single Ukrainian for this, that Ru they're not going to defeat Russia because we would all, we're all just going to get blown up. Like it's not going to happen. This isn't, this isn't, this is Russia. And I say this every time fighting to exist because they would cease to exist as Russia if they weren't fighting back. That's, that's just the reality. NATO has wanted to take control of the region. You know, the Euro mountains of Russia have one of the uh, most largest amounts the largest amounts of natural resources in the entire earth russia is so big it's bigger than i think it's bigger than it's i think i read it was bigger than the moon um it's it's ridiculous it's ridiculous how big it is it is insanely big there's a lot of natural resources the west has always just wanted to conquer it and i really don't think that we're gonna this is this is up to ukraine and nato to stop i don't think russia is gonna uh you know s stop fighting when there, there's continued shelling going on. And fam, while we have uh, a Congress full of nobody who will say anything, this is Donald Trump on Ukraine. We must demand the immediate negotiation of a peaceful end to the war in Ukraine or we will end up in World War III. And there will be nothing left of our planet. All because stupid people didn't have a clue. They don't understand the power of nuclear. If you read this comment, you would assume that it was supposed to come from a member of the squad, fam. Um, it came from Donald Trump. I mean, we're going to play the video real quick, but you got anything to say before we jump into this real quick? Because this is just kind of – this is just crazy to me that Donald Trump is the only one saying this. Everybody else in our Congress pretty much is just full-fledged, foot on the gas, going for war, 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 war pushing okay with funding Nazis, with funding you know, all the military industrial complex, funding this proxy war. You know, I made a tweet with Corey Bush. He said something. I was like, you funded, you, you voted to fund this, uh, a proxy war. Shh. Don't say anything. I don't want to hear anything from anybody anymore. This is crazy. And it's still going on. People are dying every day. Children are dying. You know, Wyatt was saying the other day, uh, that you know, he saw all these babushkas and these people were crying. They family members met up because they hadn't seen them for so long because they were living in their basements, you know, from the shelling that's been going on for the last eight years. And 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 nobody even gives a shit. There's no nobody on the left is peaceful. Bernie Sanders, he's not going to say anything about this. 
they're still going to play the this is the Putin game. This is one man's desire. I think it was the Finland president who said this morning or yesterday, oh, how did we end this? It ends when Putin leaves. It's like, yeah, what are you? What are you, six? I think I think a Trump is knows he's he's uh, campaigning and knows that the Republicans are also coming up to election. So I think that's also why he's saying this. Uh, I don't think he would be less warmongering of a president when it comes to other regions. But I do see more Republicans being against spending all this money on on war. People like Marjorie Taylor Greene have spoken out and others. So I do think like there is a sector of the Republican Party that's definitely been better than the any of the Democrats when it comes to this conflict. But I also think it's also driven by politics and the election game. So um, we'll see. We'll see. what and, happens. and that's a fair assessment. But guess what? I don't care in this point. Somebody say something. Speak it out. If his if his people and his followers are going to believe it and listen to it, we need to negotiate peace. Then so be it. Whether he's just freaking trying to drum up votes. I get it. But still, it needs to be said. It needs to be said. And that's always the positive thing about the bullshit that comes out of his mouth. Yeah, he's probably doing it for political reasons, but guess what? His followers are going to repeat it. I'm happy with that. So I'm going to mute us both and then uh, uh, play it so it doesn't echo, guys. Thank you for watching the Convo Couch. Pasta Fee. Uh, Wednesday, we're going to have Dan Cohen on. And who else, Sam? Bailey. Vanessa Bailey. Here's Donald Trump speaking out against the war. And, oh, yeah, by the way, fam, China. We must demand the immediate negotiation of a peaceful end to the war in Ukraine, or we will end up in World War III, and there will be nothing left of our planet, all because stupid people didn't have a clue. They didn't have a clue. They don't understand. They really don't understand. I rebuilt our military. I rebuilt our nuclear power. They don't understand what they're dealing with, the power of nuclear. They have. We must demand the... Power of nuclear, fam. It's the power of nuclear. They don't understand, fam. And by the way, China. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I still, I'm always going back on like I think the reason matters, but at this, at this point, uh, the the Democrats are getting out common sensed by the right, and that's just the way it is. I mean, a lot of the right is being more anti-war than the left right now in the United States. Right. And that's and that's crazy. States. Yeah. And it's it's ridiculous because what's what's gone on is that it's almost like the neoliberals and the neocons have merged into this uh, unanimous block that just wants war. But everybody else that that, you know, doesn't want war is a Putin puppet, is a right winger, is this and that. And like, I think that there's something to be said about what's going on, which is why it's so hard in the United States to talk about labels, because it's like, well, at this point, you could find somebody that's a conservative that doesn't want war with Russia and is more anti-war than somebody that's a liberal or a left progressive that is literally willing to give billions and billions and billions of more money to freaking uh, Ukraine and to take us into nuclear war. And I think that's an important distinction that we're seeing here as, as this country develops and as people, you know, veer off from the, the paradigm of Democrat and Republican and start creating these little niches. Um, so this is uh, important to us, fam, right? Because Wyatt is one of our comrades. Mm -hmm. He's uh, a friend. He is uh, somebody that we've been on the ground with. I said two, but it was act actually three because I was in D.C. for an Assange event uh, mm -hmm. as well. And uh, did you want to say anything before we, we played this video? He used WhatsApp to share his location with a friend and shortly after boom i don't think i don't know if it's necessarily it, it's connected but it's just something we need to point out right i think we need to start moving towards apps that are going to try and freaking chat you know kind of protect us especially locations once again i'm not saying that it is but i think why it is already i'm not sure if he's already deleted his whatsapp or if he's using it but he did mention that and it's like you said over here, fam, you mentioned I've been on the ground with Wyatt in two countries. We were on the ground with him in Nicaragua and not only in Nicaragua, we weren't in, in just Managua with, with Wyatt. Wyatt came with us to Bill Week. We went to Bill Week together. It was 10 of us. 
Um, and then on the ground in Honduras, you know what I'm saying? Uh, could have been on the ground with him in Colombia, fam, but he picked the right uh, round, just like he picked the right round in Brazil. <laughs> so the bastard's going to be probably, he's going to be the second round in Colombia and Brazil while we went to the first round in Colombia and Brazil. But yeah, White is, you know, is an election integrity guy now too as well, uh, witnessing that the referendum over there in uh, the Donbass, it's great. I mean, you know, Wyatt's been in the studio. You know how we are. He, we're friends with Wyatt. We love him. And fam put the and fact that he'd be gone had he been in his hotel moments before because Ukrainian, U Ukraine continues targeting civilians and journalists is unnerving and media silence. The media silence is just criminal. They Hashtag haven't mentioned criminal. anything. No. They haven't mentioned anything. And I do have to say, fam, um, uh, we're doing a special show with Wyatt tomorrow. Mm -hmm. He's going to be on the show. And uh, he's going to come on to talk about his experience. And, um, you know, this is important because this could be any of us, right? Had we just, had we somehow gone to the Donbass, had any of us been there, you know, fam, if you wanted to go to the Donbass, I, I mean, I know people that could get you there and and stuff like th this is th This is something that all journalists should be doing, but most don't. Why? Because this happens, right? And a lot of people, I understand, don't want to risk their lives. I mean, it's scary. Eva has talked about it at length, how if you're facing a certain side, you're more likely to get shelled because they shell from this end and that end. And just having that mentality, most of us don't have that war mentality, even as journalists, because most of us haven't reported from being shelled all the time. But this is something that Eva has constantly gone through, Eva Bartlett. And this is something that the people in Donbass, and this is what I want to point out most in what Wyatt will point out in this video, the people in the Donbass region have undergone this every single day of their lives for the last almost nine years to the silence of nobody else, of, of like to the silence of everybody else. No flags were placed. No celebrations or condemnations were made uh, in, in their favor you know, to protect them. There was no no money, no rallies held. Nobody gave a shit until the United States and the Western media propagandists decided to make you think that you had to care, care about Ukraine. And what Ukraine that we're talking about here is being destroyed by people like Zelensky, the puppet, and NATO. And they're going to continue to destroy Ukraine to where it doesn't even look like the Ukraine you knew before. And that's nobody's fault but NATO's because this never had to go this way, but this is of course they're willing to sacrifice all these people. So, um, yeah, let's go. I'm going to mute us. So yeah. we, I'm going to mute us. So you can hear us. But once again, deep space, how you doing, buddy? He said, I hope the Ukrainians kick their Ill illegitimate government out. We need to do the same here in the U S with the deep state, uh, demented Joe regime fam. I've been talking about how is this going to end, right? This is, this is end of February. This, the military operation, started at what point are they going to run out of resources out of bodies out of people but what needs to happen i think is what deep space is saying right here they need to remove their government things have to get so bad and i think after this next round of bombing you're going to see that you're going to see some desperation from people within the ukrainian government going all right enough is enough we played too many games we got to get these assholes out and try to get back in what they had in before you know with yanukovych mm -hmm. someone who was Russian friendly, but he wasn't like a Russian stooge. And he was even listening to the EU. Uh, a lot of people said that Ukraine, the situation that Ukraine's in uh, is also to the fault of Vladimir Putin, the Russian Federation, because they didn't offer up a, a sweet, friendly deal enough to keep them away from looking into the EU and whatnot. I don't know. Uh, maybe there could have been more that could have been done, but definitely they removed that president. They put a puppet up. We know all about this, and that's what needs to be done. Ukrainians going to have to take back their own government, and that's the only way this thing is going to end, I think. I'm going to mute us up, guys. Do us a favor. Hit the like button. Hit the share button. Fiorella Pasta Jardula, the convo couch here. Do us that favor.